right, so imagine yourself a year from now, you're in college, and you have a roommate who's a college athlete who you're good friends with. Now, this roommate, um, your college pays for their housing, their fees, their tuition, and their food, right? But what they don't pay for is any extra things that they would need that they don't have the extra cash for, such as clothes, shoes, anything like that. Now, this problem makes me believe that college athletes deserve to have a stipend based off of, for compensation based off of their, um, the use of their image, the sustained injuries, and the divisions that they're in. Now, the first type of problem presented itself in 2009 with the Ed O'Bannon case. What he did is he took the NCAA to court in the U.S. Supreme Court because the NCAA were violating um, several antitrust laws. And these laws are pretty much stating that he was, they were using these players' images without paying them. So the problem with this is that the NCAA won, and their excuse was that these athletes' education were being paid for, and the, the college sports as a whole were very amateur, so they don't deserve a lot of extra money. Now the next problem has to do with injuries, because not all schools fully pay for um, coverage for their athletes, and these schools are like Division II and Division III schools. And this poses a major threat to athletes because if they get hurt, they don't have full coverage for uh, their injuries. Now, Joe Nocera of the New York Times states, quote, the current system basically screws a bunch of kids, a lot of them disadvantaged kids, end quote. And the, a case of, uh, the case of Kyle Hardrick, an Oklahoma U basketball player, he had a knee injury and what his school did is they took away his scholarship, left him and his family with $10,000 in medical debt, which is a big problem. Like imagine if he didn't have his family to help him pay off that debt, he would be stuck with it. Plus now he doesn't have a college education to help pay off that debt. So that's a huge problem for him. Now O'Bannon's case does show hope because before the NCAA won, the case, um, the judge went and he ruled that these athletes should have a $400 a month stipend, which is an allowance. That way they have extra money for whatever they need and hopefully they can save some of that up for medical coverage if they need it. So this is a big sign of hope for these athletes just to show that the courts might have in the future, might, they might side with these athletes, right? So you might wonder what the best stipend would be and it would be based off the Olympic model, which means that players are, um, they're paid for the use of their image, for like how much fame they create. So say a really popular basketball player sells a bunch of, um, a bunch of his jerseys sell, and that means he gets a certain percentage of those jerseys. And so this will help create balance in the divisions. So division one athletes will obviously make a lot more money and that way Division two and three athletes who aren't very popular, they won't have to get paid a lot. Um, in conclusion, these athletes need to be paid by the Olympic model and they need full health insurance. That way, whenever they get injured, they don't have a lot of debt. And that way, if their scholarships are taken away from them, they can uh, still have their injuries paid for. And the best action I can ask for any of you is just voice your support for these athletes. That way they have some sort of support for, uh, for them. Now you could be the voice of change for all students who are at a disadvantage in the current system. Thank you. athletes who have like a really big stipend, especially if it's based off the Olympic model, they make a lot of money. They can put any of that extra money that those athletes don't need into a, an account. That way after college, they can have a lot of money to lean back on for like graduate school and stuff like that. So are there any colleges that offer the Olympic model now? I think a few Division I schools do. I saw something about that. Uh, 
is that stipend at a minimum of four hundred dollars? Like I have to pay at least four hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Could they use that stipend to pay for anything? Like could they just go floating on? They could, but there are a lot of kids out there in Division two and three schools who really need it. So it would definitely be worth it. A lot of the Division one schools already pay their athletes a huge stipend. Um, I believe Alex told me. Didn't you tell me about some um, someone from Notre Dame? It's my cousin in law's uh, their cousin. They play basketball for Notre Dame. They get like a, a nineteen hundred dollar stipend. Yeah. So there are schools paying. So them. they. Isn't it just students being greedy? I mean, these athletes are getting their education paid for. Isn't that enough? They have a lot of extra things that they need, and especially Division two and three schools. That's the big problem because if these athletes get injured, you know, they're sacrifice. They're making a lot of sacrifices, time and energy. And so if they get injured, you know, they need some extra coverage. And even Division one, like all athletes all across the board, you know, just tuition, housing, and food is like everything you need in life. You still need money for clothes and shoes and whatnot, right? Yes. Uh, you mentioned the student that hurt himself and the school basically just dropped him kind of. Yeah, I got the knee injury. And yeah, the the knee injury. Scholarship. Now, do you think that was just because he got the injury or was it maybe because his grades were failing? It was because what a lot of schools do as soon as their athletes get injured to the point where the schools say, ah, he's probably not going to be able to play later in the season. And if they're not the best player, like if this guy isn't LeBron James, you know, they're just going to drop him because they can find a replacement for him. So that really 